Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. It's another paid request this time for Arthur. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Usually, PayPal is the best way. And this is for the 2009 film Hunger, which I guess it was part of the Fangoria Fright Fest festivals they would have the show of movies although I dare anyone to name you know three of those movies worth a spit I didn't care for this film at all it's the most basic of plots it's literally five strangers they wake up and they're in darkness in fact like the first 15 minutes other than one or two shots which I'll get to the first 15 minutes of the movie is darkness, where you see a bare minimum of light across someone's face. Uh, up close, you barely see them, and then up close, you barely see them, and for the most part, there was darkness. Because you come to find out these five strangers are trapped in this abandoned well, and there's a psycho watching them on monitors, and his plan is he's put some barrels of water later a scalpel and he's going to study how long it takes for these five people to have their minds consumed to retaliate with cannibalism because this whole they say you can't go 30 days without eating and then pretty much the rest of it is these five kind of trying to figure out what to do and, you know, you have the nice guy, you have the lead girl, you have the asshole, you have the wild card who goes crazy, and you have another lady, where she's going to go... This seems like such a generic slate. Even the characters, it's like, okay, make sure you got a crazy guy, make sure you got a bad guy, make sure you got, you know... If it's a girl and her boyfriend, or if they're strangers, you know... One or two nice people. Make sure you have at least two ladies, and one's nice, and one's nice, and the other's going to be mean, or a little bit bitchy, or a little bit slutty, or a little bit something else. So make sure you get those tropes in. Visually, there's visually this was very annoying. It tried to be the first Saw film. You know how the Saw, most of the Saw films did this, but especially the first one. But I think that was handled with more, more flair, because James Wan is a much better director. But you know how it had like these little quick cuts type of things. But Saw looked a lot slicker and well produced, because James Wan is a very talented director. I mean, I love Malignant, I like The Conjuring, even The Conjuring 2, Death Sentence. This guy, I don't know what else he's done. There would be these times where it would flash to white just because and it got really fucking annoying. And there'd be these bad flashes, quick flashes. It felt more like a rip-off of a CSI show. And this, a lot of times this is with Philly. I was watching either a movie on Lifetime or some kind of bad TV show. The idea that it was like a ripoff of CSI or stuff where someone's talking and there'd be these flash or you had to flash the white or all this other stuff. See, you can't see this, but even God himself is putting the clouds because it just got a lot darker. His mood got soured. We talked about this fucking movie. He's in a sour mood now. We're talking about this fuck. No, he's sour and he's in a mood because you know who one of the five strangers happens to be? Lyndon Ashby. Yes, Johnny Cage from the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie. I'm like... Is that like that Jackie Chan meme? Like, And he's good. Lyndon Ashby is good. But spoiler alert, he's the first to die. <laughs> of course, you get the most recognizable actor of the group, who to me is the best actor of the group. And his character is actually interesting because he's like a... <clears throat> I think he mentioned he was a construction worker. 
there's a little bit of backstory where his wife was sick and he assisted her because she didn't want to live anymore and then he was in jail because of that. Like, imagine if this story was approached more from his point of view, if he was the lead, where he felt like he was being punished and he would... But no, you know what, I'm going to save these people because they're trying to save my wife and then you're going to that front. As spam is calling me. But I'm like, oh man, imagine like I said, if if he was the lead guy, if it was his point of view, that'd be so much better. If it was his point of view. And then, okay, these people are trying to screw me over. Maybe I deserve to be punished. He's like, you know what? I'm going to try to live and forgive myself and blah, blah, blah. No, we can't go into that. Can't go into that at all. Because that would be actually interesting. So, dim back. You also did a little bit of the killer where, I guess, when he was a kid. And you see this, like, one or two shots at the beginning. And a little bit throughout is that when he was a kid, he was in a car crash with his mom. His mom died. He was stuck. And then he couldn't do anything. He had to resort to eating his mom. So that I guess they tried to... But even then, I still don't understand... I would say I, I don't understand the motive of the killer, but he's insane. If I understood an insane person, then I'd be insane too. That's the point of people being insane is you don't... They're not doing sane things. If they were doing sane things, they'd be sane, not insane. And it was just a bore fest. I didn't visually, it was in an abandoned well. You go through the 30 days. Although, you go through the 30 days but number one no one's hair seems to grow after 30 days people seem to be in all right condition other than a little bit dirty <laughs> and it'll cut to the killer in his face I swear to god they shot all his scenes or most of his scenes in one day cause a lot of times I would go to his room in a monitor watching the monitors and he's wearing the same white shirt throughout the 30 days the only time he changes his shirt is there's one bit where these two people are outside and they hear something and the guy comes out with a coat, tranquilizes them, ties them up in a car and then pushes the car over like a ditch or something into the water. But other than that, when he's inside and, and from time to time it goes to him watching, writing, of course, because he's psycho, he's got to be listening to classical music. You know, maybe it'd be fun, maybe it'd be me, well, of course. It's like, villains either have to play chess, or listen to classical music. It's like, one or the other, or both. But, again, you would see him, I'm like, why is he wearing the same fucking shirt? Is he just, is this like a uniform? Whatever you do, I'm gonna go back here and... It doesn't really show like how he goes through the 30 days. Does I guess he lives there? Did he have enough food there? Uh, does he go out to do anything else? Does he ever change his fucking shirt? I mean, I like wearing the same shirt too, but not for 30 fucking days. And what is this cannibalism project going to prove? Is it going to prove, like... I don't know. This felt like another movie Arthur had me review where it was like a group of people stuck. In this point, it was like a house and some kind of experiment of you're going to kill the other person. It felt almost the same thing. I forget what the hell that movie was called, though. Maybe Arthur, you probably remember... Because your memory's going to be better than mine. So I'm like, it felt like the same movie as that movie. So as it goes along, Lyndon Ashby, you find out, this is heavy spoilers, he has a minor 
heart condition. Uh, again, of the five people, you have the lead girl, which I forgot what her backstory was. Lyndon Ashby, he's a guy that again he was a he's trying to dig a hole out with these bricks. Sally doesn't lead anywhere, but at least he's trying. He's being the nice guy. One is the wild card who he goes crazy. For the fourth is another guy who shot a store clerk. And he's our other villain. And five is his lady whose boyfriend did something or I think she killed her boyfriend actually because he was doing stuff and <laughs> there's a scene later on where the bad guy the the guy who shot the store clerk and that girl they're in a corner humping and fucking in this dirty ass abandoned well I'm sorry after well I guess when in Rome sure there's a dirty ass well, and by this point, you've eaten a couple people. Uh, sure, go fuck against a... Then I have a comfy wall, but whatever the fuck. Anyway, the lead girl gets knocked out. Lyndon Ashby, he gets attacked. His, his, he's going to die anyway. He has a minor heart condition. They kill him. They drag him off stream. They eat him, and I'm like... Great, so an actor I like, Lyndon Ashby, Johnny Cage from 95 Mortal Kombat, they fucking kill him off. You, you took out the best actor, you took out what maybe could be the more interesting character. Because we gotta have the lead be a lady. I'm sorry folks, that is one thing I've noticed a lot of these is that it becomes very typical where you, you can pretty much pinpoint who's going to be the lead, who's going to be the last survivor, and 90% of the time is going to be the lady. Because they feel that, well, the lady, that means you will feel more sorry because either more, quote, weak, submissive, blah, 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 more of a victim, however you want to word it. I think that's how a lot of writers do it. Because I've, I've heard this in interviews where people go, well, we can't have it be a guy. I mean, it'd be weird if a guy was crying or a guy was screaming or a guy w well you don't have to write him that way but you'd still write him being steered yeah but it would work as well if it was a guy because we would feel as sorry for him and I'm like well he's a character that you hopefully like and a human being but whatever it just most of the time it's just gonna be the lady be the lead in this type of stuff and she was there like the lead was f there I could take her or leave her So now there's four left, and for some reason, okay, the the asshole, the 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 seemingly normal guy that went crazy, and the girl, especially the the guy went crazy, and the girl, like they ate a bit of Lyndon Ashby, and then they start acting like zombies, like with blood all over them. Surprised they didn't go brains, brains. Thankfully, they don't add like zombies throughout the whole rest of the movie, but just that at one moment they act like zombies. The one that's going crazy tries to bite the one girl's arm, and the store clerk shooter slashes the crazy guy's throat. They try to get the lead girl. The lead girl traps her. He, she lost herself because there's like another room. The store clerk strangles the the other lady. The lead lady comes in and kills that guy. Then apparently she wrote something and then she just sat down and moved for days. And the bat the the psycho, I guess he's so curious as to what she wrote, because she also states, "I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to satisfy your BS. I'd rather die." So I guess for him, it's kind of like, 
you think you're better than he doesn't say this but I'm guessing it's like, you think you're better than me because I had to eat my mom and that's another thing when you have the flashback where the kid has to eat his mom the kid has like no emotion he has as much emotion as picking his flavor of ice cream at McDonald's I mean it just no fear no hesitation no tears just Like, like no emotion on his face, which I thought was weird. And so the the, and at times this movie also does this overzealous bits with the score. At times the musical score seems like they bought it from someone, or like stuff you would see you would hear, used for free and people's videos or stuff and it'd be the most minute thing but it'd be this overzealous score even when super spoilers the psycho is so adamant what did she write dude what did she write and she it seems like she has a mood for days he goes in and on it says see you soon sunlight he turns she found like a the scalp or a bone or something, stabs the guy. She slowly come, climbs out. And the music is trying to act like it's this fucking epic superhero movie or something. And you find out she's Supergirl. No. And she looks pretty pretty good for, you know, not eating for 30 days. And it was, it was nice that even when the psycho went down there, he had the same fucking white shirt <laughs> that apparently he was wearing for the other 30 days. I just don't see what people get out of this. I mean, if you're looking for a psychological trip with cannibalism, this really isn't it. I mean, I got more out of that from Ravenous. And more fun. If you're a gore hound, there's not a lot of gore. If you're into body count, there's not a whole lot of body count. The acting, I mean, Lyndon Ashby, I think, is easily the best actor. So, of course, he's the first to go. Which is... Maybe it was smart of him. Maybe it's like, listen, I'll do your movie, but you got to get me the fuck out of here as soon as possible. So, I have to stay here. So, I don't know, maybe that was a smart on his part, but... As to make the movie better, I think it would have been better if he was the lead. I see it overzealous in editing, flashing the white, trying to be, again, like Saw or one of those CSI TV shows. This kind of a guy that likes CSI Miami, so. Fairly predictable. Really, nothing of note to really get your interest. I mean, was it scary? No. Was it creepy? No. Was it bloody? Eh, not really. A little bit, but you you've all seen way way worse. The killer, eh, seems like a normal schlub of a man. The backstory, I did doesn't help that you know the kid. They had him act so nonchalant during the whole, during these bits. So you don't really get much of a feeling of trepidation, terror. You feel sorry. None of those emotions come into play. Again, you don't really get even much of a breakdown because you don't see him like get thinner or have hair more hair grow. And it seems like other than piling some dirt on them, they look almost the same. Pile some blood and dirt on them, and there you go. And in visually, because it's down at abandoned well, there's not much to look at scenery-wise. So, and again, the music's overzealous and sound like they bought it from someone to to use or or got it for free. And the, apparently, the the chickens outside they want me to shut up about talking about it. So, 
I mean, I keep saying the word hunger and they didn't really eat them. Then I don't eat those chickens. I'll eat chicken, but not those chickens. But with that said, hunger for 2009. I don't really know what the, who this would be for. I really don't. So, what a waste of Lyndon Ashby. That's an actor I do like. And he could be utilized a lot better in movies. I think he had a good charm to him. I think he's a pretty decent actor. And they just... He didn't really get a lot of good roles. Well, he was a star of this Die Hard at a Swimming Pool movie. Yes. And I'm like, man... Rest in peace, Albert Pyoon. That guy who did Cyborg with Van Damme and Nemesis, but that was not one of the... I forget what it was called. I think it actually has a Blu-ray, too. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if I saw the Blu-ray for cheap, I'll pick it up to give it another watch, but I do remember not caring for the film. <laughs> I think, like, Roger Howard is in it as well, and I think Andrew Devoff, or someone like that is the bad guy. Something like that. I mean, I, like I said, I forgot what the hell it was called. <laughs> I do remember not being that good. But not because of Lyndon Ashby. Lyndon Ashby just didn't get a whole lot to do in that movie. Didn't get to kick a lot of ass. But anyway, I'm going off tangent. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.